Good morning, those of you who are in their respective houses. Good morning. We are live now, and uh, shall we all start? Let us pray, Lord. We want to bless you, Lord, in this time, oh God, in good times and in bad times. We want to still praise you, for you deserve it, oh God. You are still good, God, and you are great, God, and we want to bless your name this morning. And we want to uphold to you our service. I pray that you anoint the preaching of your word. I pray that you anoint those who are in their respected houses, Lord. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Come on, let's praise the Lord for His goodness endures forever. We 
believe that you were stronger You're still on the throne He is not confined He confounds He will not resign He resounds He is not restrained Oh, hear the sound Oh, hear the sound The rocks are falling The broken calling You're the God who moves the mountain The earth is shaking The weary waking To the God who moves the mountain the God who moved the mountain. Yeah. Oh, we believe you're the God who moved the mountain. Oh, He's not surprised. He surrounds. Oh, He cannot be stopped. He is down, oh he is drawing near, oh hear the sounds, oh hear the sound. The rocks are falling, the broken calling, you're the God who moves the mountains, the God who moves the mountains. The earth is shaking, the wind 
to preach to us the Word of God. Thank you. Evangelize, how are you? Pastor Lily and me, we are very fine in Singapore and we are not going back. Just kidding. We are trying to go back as soon as possible. As you know right now, Civil Pacific has cancelled our flight. We are supposed to fly this Wednesday but it looks like it won't happen. The earliest we can go back is April the 14th. We just want to tell you that definitely we are going back. And uh, we want to encourage you all to be strong and stay together. Do not be overcome by fear because of COVID-19. You know there is fear everywhere in the world right now. And I believe it is the same thing in Ilolo City. But please do not give in to fear because number one you have a god with you and your god is a good god your god is a strong god your god is a powerful god and i know that we can call to our god and things will be safe things will be calm so just want to tell you that everything is going to be fine and let's pray that you will this whole covid thing will end as fast as possible okay i'm asked to address you all this morning I was given just 24 hours to prepare my sermon which I managed to get it done and I'll try to share with you all to encourage every every of the, one of you in this congregation. Shall we pray?
Father, we thank you for this opportunity that we can listen to the Word of God. Thank you that we have the mass media, even though we cannot gather together in one specific location, we can hear the Word of God through live streaming even Lord. Father, I pray for this message. It has been a blessing to me. You have spoken to me. Let this message be a blessing to your people, even Lord. Let it change their heart and encourage us and bring forth faith in our life. In Jesus' name, I pray. Okay, I'm going to title my message this morning on the messenger and the watchman. Okay, since coming back uh, for a break in Singapore, uh, as I was having my devotion, I I was receiving something, some word from God, and the scripture keeps coming back again and again and again. So when they told me that I have to share the word of God within 24 hours, I got this message. So I hope that it will be a blessing to you. <clears throat> the title is The Messengers and the Watchmen. Uh, if you have a Bible, we should turn to Ezekiel chapter 3, verse 1 to 10. Ezekiel chapter 3 verse 1 to 10. I'm going to read slowly. Here it goes. Moreover he said unto me, Son of man, eat that thou finest, eat this roll, and go speak unto the house of Israel. So I opened my mouth, and he caused me to eat that roll. And he said unto me, Son of man, cause thy belly to eat, and fill thy bowels with this roll that I give thee. Then did I eat it, and it was in my mouth as honey for sweetness, and he said unto me, Son of man, go, get thee unto the house of Israel, and speak with thy words unto them. For thou art not sent to a people of a strange speech, and of a hard, hard language, but to the house of Israel. Not many people of a strange speech, and of a hard language, whose word thou cannot understand. Surely had I sent thee to them, they would have hearkened unto thee. But the house of Israel would not hearken unto thee, for they would not hearken unto me. For all the house of Israel are impudent and hard-hearted. Behold, I have made thy face strong against their faces, thy forehead strong against their foreheads. As an adamant harder than fling, have I made thy forehead. Fear them not, neither be dismayed at their looks, though they be a rebellious house. Moreover, he said unto me, Son of man, all my words that I have sent speak unto thee, receive in thy heart, and hear with thy Yes. If you know Ezekiel chapter 3, you will read that Ezekiel was instructed to eat a scroll or a roll. In the olden times, a scroll is a, is a rolled up paper. Ezekiel was told to eat that scroll. His commission to go to them that are in captivity. Then he was to go to Tel Aviv, which is a city today in uh, Israel where he beheld the Shekinah glory of God. From there, God instructed him to return to his house, retire to his house, because a great number of people will come to his house for counseling, for the word of God, for advice. He's only to speak when God opens his mouth. So the word is not his word. The word is God's word. I see clearly Ezekiel's call to prophetic ministries. And what it entails when one is called into prophetic ministries. In this world, I see many who call themselves prophets and prophetess, and yet they don't possess any of the characteristics mentioned in Ezekiel chapter 3. It's very interesting. When I was reading Ezekiel chapter 3, suddenly I realized that uh, if you want to be involved in prophetic ministries, these are some of the criteria and details you have to hearken onto. I see Many who prophesize, yet they knew nothing when it comes to the knowledge of the Word of God. Their knowledge is from the world, their knowledge is from, from philosophy, their knowledge is from the secular. I question the source of their prophecy. I feel that they prophesy out of their own heart and not of God's heart. Yet at the same time, what the world needs today is prophetic ministry. Please don't be surprised that God wants many in the church to have prophetic ministry. It is in Ezekiel 3 that I realized God showed me what is needed to have, what I need to have if I want to have a prophetic ministry. I know that the word of prophetic the word prophetic ministry sounds unreachable and only given to a selected few. 
It is unreachable and given to a selected few, not because Yahweh is unwilling, but because we are ignorant and unaware of the tremendous need. I realize that if you understand Ezekiel 3, you will be able to appreciate the value and importance of prophetic ministry, especially in the world that we are living in now. I also realize that prophetic ministry is developed and gets more and more powerful if you cooperate with Yahweh. Let's study this portion of scripture. Number one, the messenger. Ezekiel 3, 1 says, Moreover, he said unto me, Son of man, go eat that thou findest, eat this roll, and go and speak unto the house of Israel. Notice the phrase, son of man. And the word son is in capital letter. It is addressed, in capital, addressed and written in capital letter. There's a significance in it, and I want to dwell on it for a while. Son of man is literally Ben Adam. Adam is son of man. This is often seen throughout Ezekiel as a way of referring to Ezekiel as a human being. When you call some, someone son of man, you're saying you are a human being. You are a man. That prophetic, that prophetic minister is a man. So firstly, a person in prophetic ministry is a man. Not an angel, not God. In the book of Ezekiel, it is a common way Yahweh addresses Ezekiel. The phrase has a very powerful effect on me. Secondly, God wants to talk to you about things. God wants to talk to me. God wants to talk to you. You'll be very surprised that God wants to talk to you about things. I want you to ponder over this for a while. God wants to talk to you. I mean, if I want to see the President of the United States, or if I want to see uh, President Duterte of the Philippines, I must be a powerful man, uh, very well endowed, and or something. I have something very important to share with him. Actually, if I want to see the President, what I want to share must be beneficial to that president. Then I am allowed to see him. And I think if I ever want to see him, I may be able to see him only once in my entire lifetime. But here I'm astonished that Yahweh, the creator of all humans, where all the lands and all the animals were created by him and that belongs to him, wants to talk to me. Yahweh, our God, wants to talk to you about things. And not for once in a lifetime. He would like to talk to you daily if you are willing. He uses his invisible hand to tear down the veil in Jerusalem temple from top to bottom. Meaning you say he's the one that did the tearing because he wants to talk to you. That is our God. That is Yahweh. I don't think I'm the only one to think of God that way. The psalmist too was amazed by God. The same phrase, son of man, is found in Psalms 8, verse 3 to 4. It says this, When I look at the night sky and see the works of your finger, the moon and the stars, you set in place. What is mere mortal, mere man? They should think about them. Human beings, that you should care for them. Yet, God wants to talk to you about things. Thirdly, Usually, he talks to you during bad times. If you think that God doesn't care about you in bad times, in your captivity, in bondages, you are so very wrong. God comes to you when you are living in a state of being imprisoned, held, enslaved, or confined. Usually, God comes to you more often than not. God comes to human beings more often than not when they are in their bad times. I think many of you remember a member of LSBC. He's a, a, a counsellor, a psychological counsellor, having offices in Singapore, in Bangkok. He came to Ilolo City uh, in 2019 with a team from LSBC. He taught our leaders on marriage counselling and boy-girls relationship. Recently, he went to uh, America and when he came back, he had high fever. Then when checked upon, he, real he realized that he contacted COVID-19. The ambulance came to his house. And as I shared right now, 
He is in NCID, National Center for Infectious Disease, or confirmed COVID-19 cases. For the first two days, he says that he was fine, his degree was 38.5, and they just gave him Panadol, and nothing else. I think that is what a uh, flu flu can you, you cannot cure you cannot be cured of flu at all i think you cannot be cured of covid 19. there is nothing he can do they just they just give him panadol then one week later see that was march 10 on march 18 one week later we were in the same chat group we received an update from him from his hospital he said he felt chill and he felt very cold and he was starting to get scared. The swab test is still positive. He asked for prayer against negative thoughts. He's fearful. What if he is to die? We told him to hold on to the word of God. I told him to read the Bible until a word come up from the Bible and hold on to the word. And he thanked me. Everybody prayed for him. Then one day later, the fever went down to 37.9. He still asks for prayer against fear and negative thoughts. The swap test is still positive. But God is definitely with him when he is literally living in captivity, a state of being held, in prison and confined. The message of God came to Ezekiel when he was living in captivity, in exile in Babylon. All Bible scholars know that Jeremiah and Ezekiel were contemporaries. Both lived in the very bad times in Israel history. Jeremiah was a prophet in Jerusalem, whereas Ezekiel was a prophet in Babylon. Both were living in bad times. Fourthly, this, man, this son of man has divine characteristics. This is a very interesting point. The term son of man takes on a divine characteristics in Daniel chapter 7, verse 13, as one likened to a son of man coming before the ancients of day, riding on the clouds of heaven. Daniel 7.13 is the background for Jesus' use of this term for himself which combines humanity and deity. In Daniel, it refers to Jesus having divine and human characteristics. Let's go back to us. We are human, yet we can possess divine characteristics. Fifthly, Ezekiel is seen here as a representative man. You, you ask, Pastor, what do you mean by representative man? Recently, I came to Yahweh and said, God, I am that representative man. I acknowledge I am a human being. When you call Ezekiel as a son of man, you imply the lowliness and the frailty of the man as men lower than the angels. And that is who we are. That is what we are. That is the lowliness of our status. This COVID-19 enhances this truth, how weak humans are. Many humans seem to think otherwise. They think that they are intelligent, they think that they are smart, they think that they are rich, they think otherwise. But the COVID-19 only shows otherwise. COVID-19 brings forth this truth. We are just a man. We are human. This COVID-19 affects all strata of society. No one is spared. The two most powerful countries in the world and the two most powerful economies in the world cannot escape COVID-19. More than 200,000 people are affected and China have half of them today having the second most, most death. President Donald Trump asked Congress for US $1 trillion just US $1 trillion to fight COVID-19. Many countries don't have the kind of resources. They have to lock down the entire country. A pastor in Kuching, Sarawak, died of COVID-19. He was the first Malaysian to die of COVID-19. When 10,000 Muslims gathered together in Malaysia, they became the super spreaders. Celebrities and sport icons are all not spared. Tom Hanks was infected with his wife while in Australia. Kevin Durant, NBA player with his three teammates from 
uh, America were tested positive. Presidents of countries, prince of a country, senators, all are included and affected by COVID-19. I think what human, we human must learn out of this pandemic is to recognize how lowly and how frail we truly are. I don't know, but I learned this one truth. We have to come to an acknowledgement of our God. Sixthly, he is admitted to the visions of angels and of God himself. God did not stop there concerning Ezekiel a man. You see, it's so interesting. Ezekiel is a man. He's a representative man. But he's letting Ezekiel know that he is a man, yet he is now admitted to the visions of angels and of God himself. How wonderful that is. Ezekiel is to have a correct estimate. We are to have a correct estimate of ourselves. Lest we should be exalted, become proud through the abundance of resources we have or the abundance of revelation we have. Yet, he can have visions of angels and God himself. We see Yahweh addresses Ezekiel as, Stand on your feet, I may speak to you. One time, Yahweh says, Stand on your feet. And another time, he says, I may speak to you. Notice the personal God of glory addresses Ezekiel. This is one of the major themes of this book. Also note, it is to a mere human man, a fallen man, part of the rebellious people, that is addressed face to face by God, standing before the Holy Presence. This says something of the dignity of humanity made in the image of God. I want to tell you, Yahweh respect the dignity of humanity. If there is any person that respects the dignity of you, it is God. Maybe you say, I cannot be compared to Ezekiel. I want to be like Ezekiel, but I'm powerless to be like Ezekiel. I am a sinful man. I have moral weakness. I know what kind of man I am. I know how, how I should please God, but I am unable to do so. My spirit is willing, but my flesh is weak. Actually, I'm very far away from being that man. Jesus knew that truth. Jesus knew along this truth about you, if you are thinking that way. Then he came to become that man. He came, when he came, he was weak like any man. He was tempted in all points. Please understand that he was fully man. He was not 99% man. He was totally man like each and every one of us. He cried out like you and I at one point in life. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Have you cried that way to God before? I did. There are times you go through things and you don't understand and you felt alone. You say, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? I wonder how many of you have ever cried that way? I did. He asked, when going through a crisis in life, Jesus, when going through a crisis in life, he said, Father, if it is possible, let this suffering, let this pain pass, stop. When we go through pain, when we go through suffering, there are times you say, God, can you take away the pain? Can you cause the suffering to stop? This is what Jesus did. So we cannot say God doesn't understand us. He's familiar and acquainted with what we are and what we are going through. But He went further. He went further and died for you so that you can experience the forgiveness of sin and the grace and the favour of God to stand victorious and sanctified. But not many will believe what I say. But what Yahweh knew a remnant. There will always be a remnant in this world that will believe. And I hope I'm addressing you, that remnant. Arising out of this sure, un unswerving love of God, we get the doctrine of the remnant and with it the belief that God Himself will accomplish in you that repentance will cause you to repent and turn to Him without which we can never have hope. God indeed will find in you that righteousness which He wants and you will not because of what you have done but because of Jesus' righteousness. Even supposing of Israel's desiring, He will even cause you to be willing and desire for God. He said He will make you willing in the day of His power. It will be because of God's sure love. 
he will find a way for you. Hence, the beginning of the doctrines of Christian faith. What we need is to have faith. What you want, what you need is to come to him by faith alone through grace. What I'm trying to say, there will be a remnant that believes and in repentance turn to God. And it is still God's doing. Yahweh's love will find a way, a stirring in us, in the human heart. By faith, we will come to God and in repentance. Let me give this example on my own. Let me, let me explain by my own example. As a man, I have the divine characteristics of Yahweh. The personal presence of Yahweh addresses me. The personal glory of Yahweh addresses me. I'm a mere man, a fallen man, rebellious, stubborn, is addressed face to face before this holy presence. I realize that Yahweh has respect on my dignity as a human being. It's so wonderful to know that God respected me as a human being. How is He able to accomplish this? By the Holy Spirit. When Jesus was resurrected, He visited His disciples and breathed on them the Holy Spirit. He says here, And the Spirit entered into me when He spake unto me, and set me upon my feet, and had heard him that spake to me. There are three possibilities. We are speaking of the Holy Spirit. A person metaphor means the hand of God is upon me. A third is a non-human life force. The roar, the wind, the life of God entered into me. The divine, the divine entered me. I say earlier, we have divine characteristics. The Holy Spirit entered into us. Actually, Yahweh is saying that the glory of God is streaming from Him through you. You can have the glory of God streaming from Him through you. Just imagine the power of God streaming from Him through you. I had the opportunity to speak in Pastor James' church. I mean, Pastor James is really a real prophet. And who am I to talk to him about prophetic ministries in his presence? But something interesting happened to me as I was at a park praying at my house below there's a park praying for prophetic download as I was about to share in this church that evening. While praying at the park, I saw a very bright yellow bird, a beautiful bright yellow bird in the park when I was praying. Then as I entered Pastor James Church, I saw the background of his multimedia projector, the screen that was screen was yellowish gold in color and this church is called eagle's nest we all know that eagles is the most majestic of all birds yellow means the glory the presence and the anointing of god i had a message for pastor james church i told him the glory the anointing and the presence of god is there coming the church is going through a transition and god is about to start something new for his church the glory, the presence, and the anointing of God will flow through that church. Then during the other call, the other call, he made Pastor Lily and I to pray for every member of the church. Wow! Immediately after the service, Pastor James was very appreciative of our prophetic download for the church and for the accuracy of to his member. How? We have divine characteristics. We have divine characteristics. Number two, the origins of the message. Ezekiel chapter 3, verse 1 to 4 says, Moreover, he said unto me, Son of man, eat that thou findest, eat this roll, and go speak unto the house of Israel. So I opened my mouth, and he caused me to eat that roll. And he said unto me, Son of man, cause thy belly to eat, and fill thy bowels with this roll that I give thee. Then did I eat, and it was in my mouth as honey for sweetness. And he said unto me, Son of man, go, get thee unto the house of Israel, speak with my words unto them. See, when I came back to Singapore in the first month, I was reading my Bible and I came to this portion of scripture and uh, I finished it, the book of Ezekiel already, I'm into the book of Daniel. But the book of Ezekiel chapter 3 keeps on ringing in my mind again and again and again. I, I couldn't get it off. So when I was, I'm asked to talk to you all, to share with you all this morning, I, the first thing was this message. Because it's something that God has been speaking to me 
personally. This call involved Yahweh addressing him in several commands. The message, the origin of the message. What is how is the origin of the message comes about? First, he says, eat. The messenger, those in prophetic ministry, have to eat, feed upon the word of God. Go and read the word and feed upon the word of God. Then go walk to a person, walk to a place, then speak, address a person. Help that person. Give the word of God to that person. Then again, number come back, feed. Come back to feed again. Come back to feed the word of God. Come back to Yahweh again. Then take the word of God into your heart. Don't take it as just another word. <coughs> Let the word of God affect your heart. Take to heart, take to heart what he has to say. <coughs> then when God speaks to you, listen closely. Listen to Yahweh. Get up, go. Go out. Then shut yourself again the third time. Shut yourself in the house. Hear the word. <coughs> and people will come to you. And they will listen to the word of God. The prophet had to listen, eat, receive, comprehend, and then speak the message to the exiled tribes in Babylon. We have to go deep into the word of God. We have to comprehend the word of God. We cannot just browse the Word of God. We have to allow the Word of God to affect our heart. It is especially incumbent on those who want to go forth and speak, to open their mouth and eat the roll. There's no greater mistake than to suppose that because we are constantly handling God's work for the purpose of teaching and exalting, we therefore are feeding on the Word of God ourselves. No. You cannot say that, oh, I, I have to share the word, so I'm just reading the word, I'm preparing the word, I'm just sharing the word of God. It's just intellectual knowledge. The word of God does not affect you. If you are into the prophetic ministry, you must allow the word of God to affect you deeply. The eating of the scroll is not just a spiritual experience. It is a spiritual truth. You must receive. You must receive internalized, internalized, digest the word of God before you can become a messenger of that word to the house of God. Ezekiel wasn't to merely taste and sample. See, many of us, we just taste and sample. We just browse, browse God's written word. He was to fill the word of God himself with it. That's what God was trying to tell me. That to fill the word of God. I have to digest the word of God. I have to think of the word of God. Because I receive it from God. I cannot be silent. After I receive it, I have to go and speak. Yet, he could not speak his word. He is actually speaking God's word. Lastly, the watchman. I'm finishing. The messengers have the responsibility of the watchman. He has a responsibility to warn the wicked. Ezekiel 3, 16-19 says, now it come to pass at the end of seven days that the word of God came to me, saying, Son of man, I make you a watchman for the house of Israel. Therefore hear the word from my mouth and give them a warning from me. When I say to the wicked, you shall surely die, you give him no warning, nor speak to warn the wicked from his wicked way to save his life. That wicked man shall die in his iniquity, but his blood I will require at your hand. A person with prophetic download becomes a watchman. He has to hear the word of God from God and he has to deliver the word of God to someone I have a friend uh, he's a CEO of a very big uh, Bible uh, Institute he was sharing with me that uh, with me and my, uh, Pastor Lily that his elder daughter had two miscarriages then recently when she came to church as she was standing and talking to people she just fell down she just fell down. So they rushed her to hospital and after a while, they couldn't find anything. And later she recovered and when she, she decided to go back to church again. The second time when she went back to church, she just collapsed again. And uh, I just got the word that she was under some attack. It is not normal, it is something spiritual. Then I was asked to go and visit, attend his church. It's so interesting that she was there. 
that lady was there she was her face was there's a little darkness in her face because of the trials that she's going through so i asked my friend can i pray for your daughter i mean god told me to pray so i cannot say no say can i pray for your daughter so when she come i say uh, i call her i say uh, i like to pray for you i just want to tell you that what you're going through is not normal and i want to tell you that god wants to speak to you and god will give you a child and you you are to you you are to go into the word of god and you you are to take the word of god and there will be some word that will come to you from god and you are going to use the word and you're going to you are going to dispel the darkness you're going to dispel the evil you're going to dispel you're going to stop all these things all these attack and pastor lily was talking to her and counsel said maybe there's some there's things that will change she broke down and she cried and she gave pastor lily a hug see when you have a prophetic download and when you obey god you go and you speak it blesses other people but if you don't speak if something happens god holds you responsible shall we pray father right now i just want to thank you for this wonderful opportunity that we can hear the word of god i pray that my people will love the word of god god prophetic prophetic ministry is not just for the past for the prophets prophetic ministry is so needed so needed because especially in this time there are so many people they are in fear so many people they are in captivity in bondage and you can use us to minister to them and how can we minister to them we have the divine characteristics of god and we have the word and when we speak to us and we 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 digest the word and we bring the word to these people you will bring salvation for them you'll bring freedom for them we thank you we pray all this in jesus name before I let you go, just want to tell you that next week, I don't know, maybe Pastor Lily will share the word. She made me share today, so she will share next week. Uh, go, in, go into our church Facebook and you will see what will be our activities. God bless you. Take care. Don't be fearful. God is powerful. God is with you. Thank you.